Hi, this is the Tropical Tip for Saturday evening, June 26th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone and making decisions. Please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. We're into late June now, about one month into the official Atlantic hurricane season. We have a couple areas to watch this weekend. We've got a disturbance to the southwest of Bermuda and a large tropical wave to the southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. And both of these are going to be moving west over the next few days. We're going to talk about this one first, southwest of Bermuda, as it could impact land within just a couple of days. This is the more zoomed in loop of the southwestern Atlantic. We're nearing sunset at the time of this recording. And you can see this glob of convection here. There's Bermuda. And this is moving generally westward toward the southeast United States to the south of a broad subtropical ridge up to the north here. And this is kind of pushing this whole region off toward the west. And this is expected to reach the coastline of northern Florida, Georgia, or South Carolina within a couple of days. And NHC has tagged this with about a 10% chance of development, so pretty low, uh, but it is a system worth keeping a, a wary eye on. As if we evaluate the situation here, what we'll see is that there's pretty strong northeasterly flow on the north side of this glob of convection. And then if you start looking at the other surface wind directions, such as down here, a very calm wind here, very little movement of the low-level clouds under that circle, and maybe weak southerly flow here. And uh, this is trying to pull southwesterly, but it's pretty calm right now, northeasterly to the north. And if you put all these pieces together, you get this outline of a surface trough in this area. We don't really have a closed circulation underneath here, but we do have a pretty sharp wave axis. And the reason we're keeping an eye on this is because the wave axis is a little bit sharper, a little bit better defined than models had expected it to be at this time. If we look at the GFS 850 millibar vorticity, this is the current analysis from the model. And this is showing our area to the southwest of Bermuda, which is right there. You can see the area of enhanced yellow and orange here. This is this wave axis that we just saw on satellite imagery. And what I want to show you is over the last couple of runs that were forecast for this time, uh, the model didn't really see quite as defined of a wave, say yesterday during its runs. It was a little bit weaker with this. And if we go toward the current run, you can see it correcting a little bit, seeing a little bit of a stronger wave than it saw before. Now it's gonna be worth keeping an eye on this, but there are some struggles ahead of it. Uh, one of those can be seen in the water vapor satellite picture. And what we'll find here is that this wave and area of thunderstorms is sandwiched in between two different upper level lows here. You're going to see some rotation in the flow here and then some rotation down here as well. So we have two upper level lows and our disturbance here is kind of sandwiched in between. And it's going to remain entangled with these features as it translates westward toward the southeastern US. And this causes a couple of problems. Usually in this kind of situation, uh, the system will struggle to generate strong upper level outflow, which is supposed to come out from all directions in a healthy scenario for the storm. And it's also going to put some dry air in the path of this. On the southern flank of this upper level low to the north, you'll see some dark gray here. And this is already very close to the western edge of our surface trough, which is outlined in here. So the dry air is already very close to the wave envelope. And as this moves fairly briskly westward at about 15 knots, this dry air is going to get rotated into the southern flank of this disturbance during that journey westward. So if we look at the mid-level moisture in the GFS, you're gonna see that our surface trough is here and there's all the convection and dark green moisture here on the eastern side of that wave envelope. But you can also see the brown here, that little dry patch we just saw in the water vapor loop. And that's going to get rotated around if I move this forecast forward. And you'll see that by the time we get to Sunday evening, we're gonna have this dry air right in the wave pouch. The wave pouch is right here outlined by this contour and we get dry air right in the middle there. So that gets rotated around. And that's not the best look for tropical development, and one of the reasons why development chances for this system are pretty low. Uh, but it's worth keeping an eye on just in case it's able to wrap up into the northern part of the wave envelope instead, where moisture will remain. And if we start to get any kind of a, a circulation in here, uh, we might see a better moist pocket than the models currently expect. And since the wave has already been getting a little bit better defined than models have forecast, that's why we're kind of keeping an eye on it now, just in case. Uh, this will continue westward, and you can see on the model here that the timing for arriving near the coastline, we have this wave axis arriving sometime on Monday, just offshore of Georgia, South Carolina, and Northern Florida. That's kind of the timing on, on most forecasts here. Pretty straightforward track forecast, and right now, you know, the forecast for this region is going to consist of showers and gusty winds. There are some brisk winds on the north side here, so breezes of 20 to 25 miles per hour, that kind of thing, would be very typical for a system like this. 
And again, we'll keep a wary eye on it. Right now, development chances into a tropical storm are pretty low, NHC only giving it a 10. We might see that get bumped up a little bit over the next day or so, depending on how it looks. But we're just uh, warily watching it right now and only some elevated breezy and wet weather expected uh, on Monday and Tuesday in northern Florida, Georgia, and parts of South Carolina. All right, so we're going to switch gears now and move to the eastern Atlantic, uh, where we have an invest dubbed 95L. That's this big tropical wave that is to the west of Africa, which you can see over here. There's the Cabo Verde Islands. And what we have here is kind of a large gyre type of situation. Lots of rotation over a large area. You'll see westerly winds down here to the south. We've got our trade winds to the north and just a little bit of convection in the northern part of that pocket. And this whole thing is coming westward over the next several days. So a pretty healthy looking wave envelope. Uh, the one thing uh, that it's struggling with is the fact that it's quite broad. So this, while this is a closed area of low pressure with a closed circulation, it is not considered a tropical cyclone just because of its broad nature at the moment. So it would have to get more compact to actually be considered a tropical depression. And we're going to be keeping an eye on it as it comes westward. The primary limitation in the short term is the fact that it's still June. So getting development in the central Atlantic in the so-called MDR, or main development region, is somewhat rare during this time of the year. And the primary reason for that is that the waters haven't quite warmed up out here yet. So our storm's currently, you know, about here, and it's going to be moving this way over the next several days. And along this first portion of its track, sea surface temperatures are barely reaching 26 degrees Celsius, even down at this low latitude. And they don't really get warm until you start approaching the Caribbean. So once it gets west of about 40 west, if you have a track like this, it starts to get over warmer water consistently, these yellows and oranges, by the time it gets west of 40. But it's not going to get there for a couple of days yet. So it's going to struggle up until that time just to generate enough convective activity to make it a legitimate development threat. So if we look at some of the model forecasts here, this is the GFS current analysis at 850 millibars showing the low level rotation already associated with 95L. So it looks pretty healthy at the moment, but as it comes westward, it's going to be leaving the region of the monsoon southwesterly flow that typically exists off of Africa. And as it comes westward, those southwesterlies disappear. So as we go forward in time here, you'll see that this opens back up into just a wave axis. We no longer have westerlies on the southern side. Instead, we have easterlies. And so we'll have kind of this outlined wave pouch, but no longer a closed circulation. And this is a typical evolution for big waves coming off of Africa. And for these to develop into tropical cyclones, they need to close off a circulation with westerlies on the south side at some point later as they approach the Lesser Antilles. And whether that happens for this wave will depend on whether it can generate enough convective activity given the cool waters we just mentioned, and whether shear is low enough to allow that to happen because you need repeated convection over the wave pouch in order for a circulation to be able to form. Now, as this comes along, you'll see that the GFS does amplify the northern end of the wave a little bit. And if we draw a sounding box through the wave envelope and take a look at what the shear is like during this time, we'll see that it's pretty low. If you look at the vertical profile of flow, it's uniformly easterly throughout the depth of the troposphere. And this indicates that if there are thunderstorms firing off within the wave envelope, they'll be consistently firing within the same spot, allowing a circulation to potentially develop in response to that convection. And so this is showing up in the model as an amplified wave axis attempting to reform a closed cirque. And you can see that briefly in the GFS, it may even do so for a moment on this particular forecast. Now it does continue struggling on the model to maintain that closed circulation. And by Wednesday, as this is nearing the islands, it's still an open wave here. And again, this is probably mostly due to the fact that it's, it's moving quickly westward uh, at about 20 knots in the model with the strong trade wind flow that makes it very difficult to generate westerly winds on the southern side. And that's the most common reason why tropical waves fail to develop on approach to the Caribbean. And this one may be a similar, similar case, but it's worth noting that in recent model forecasts, the wave has gotten a lot better defined in the GFS. Just over the last couple of runs, it is much sharper and more threatening looking in the latest runs. And we'll have to see if that's a trend over the next couple of days as this comes westward. We really need to get it west, west of 40 degrees longitude over the warmer water to get a good look at how organized it is uh, before we'll have a, a great indication of whether formation is, is actually going to happen. Right now, NHC only gives about 30% chance of that. It's probably about right at this time, as most models do still fail to develop it to tropical storm intensity. The European model here is similar, showing just an open wave at this time 
but we get those subtle hints at the northern tip of the wave axis that it might attempt further organization. So we'll be keeping an eye on it as it approaches the Lesser Antilles. Model timing here is pretty consistent on sometime Wednesday, uh, generally late Wednesday approaching Barbados and the Lesser Antilles is the consensus timing there, uh, so within about four days. And if we look at uh, behind that wave, we'll see on both models just another area of disturbed weather riding along at a very low latitude track here. That also shows up on these models within six days or so as being the potential threat behind the current wave we just talked about. That's still uh, way off over Africa and hasn't really come off over the water yet. We'll need to see in a couple days whether something is actually there before we know whether this is something to be concerned about. That's still about a week away from the islands and so too far out to know very much about that one just yet. So that's about it for the areas we're currently watching, both low probabilities of development into tropical storms, but both areas that could bring disturbed weather to land areas, uh, one being the southeastern US and the other being the eastern Caribbean islands. So we'll be keeping an eye on both of these over the next few days. Stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center website, hurricanes.gov, for the latest info on both of these systems as we watch them throughout the weekend and early next week. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.